In this video, I'll go over setting up and configuring networks and VLANs on a Synology router. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you're already generally familiar with what VLANs or virtual local area networks are. But if you need more details, Synology has this excellent VLAN deployment quick start guide that you can check out, and I'll link to it in the description of this video. On Synology routers, you'll need to be running Synology Router Manager or SRM version 1.3 or above to set up VLANs. You'll also want to have an idea of how you'd like to configure your VLAN topology. The layout you choose really depends on how you want to segment your network. For this video, I'll go over how I'm setting up my networks and VLANs, giving you some background on why I configured things the way I did. Then I'll walk through the steps of setting up the network and VLAN infrastructure on my Synology router. Out of the box, Synology routers come with a primary and guest network. The primary network is configured on VLAN 1, which is the default VLAN for most network switches. In my setup, this is where all my trusted clients will connect, either through Wi-Fi or via an Ethernet cable. I know from a security perspective, some people recommend not using VLAN 1 since it is the default VLAN, but I'm okay with this because only a limited number of devices will be connecting to my network. If you have a larger network, you'll want to monitor which devices end up on VLAN 1 or create your trusted client network on a different VLAN. In my setup, the primary network will be allowed to access other local networks and VLANs as needed. The guest network is assigned to VLAN 1733 by default, although you can change this if you'd like. This network is designed for guests that need internet access, but don't need access to any other device on any other network or VLAN. Each guest device will be isolated from other guest devices when connected through Wi-Fi. This isn't enabled by default, but I'll turn it on for my Synology router. We can create an additional three networks or VLANs, and these are the ones that we can customize to fit our specific needs. For my setup, I chose to create an IoT network, which I'll assign VLAN ID 102. Devices on the IoT network will be allowed to connect to the internet and to other devices within the same network or VLAN. I'll also enable Wi-Fi since most of the devices in this network will connect wirelessly. The next network I'm creating is the server network, which I'll assign VLAN ID 103. Servers on this network will have internet access and may be accessed by clients on the primary network, as well as by other servers on the same network or VLAN. Servers will be physically connected using ethernet, so Wi-Fi won't be needed. The last network I'm creating is a DMZ network, which I'll assign VLAN ID 104. Systems in the DMZ network will have internet access and will be the only systems in my network that can be accessed directly from the internet using port forwarding. Wi-Fi also won't be enabled here because the DMZ devices will be connected via ethernet. At this point, I'll start configuring the networks and VLANs by connecting to my Synology router's SRM web interface. My MacBook is currently connected via an Ethernet cable plugged into port 2 on the router. Networks and VLANs are configured within Network Center under Local Network, and here we can see the primary and guest networks. For the primary network, I want to change the subnet to something other than the default, so I'm going to use 192.168.100.1 for the local IP address. Then I'll switch over to the IPv4 DHCP section and change the DHCP server settings to match the new local IP address. I'll also change the start IP address for DHCP assignments because I want to leave some of the lower IP addresses available for static assignments for certain clients. Then I'll click OK to apply the changes. I'll give it a minute, then switch to the new IP address I assign to the router and log in once again. Next, I'll select the guest network and click edit so I can configure that network as well. 
Again, I'm going to change the local IP address to something other than the default. This is also where we can change the VLAN ID for the guest network, which is 1733. You can change it if you want, but in my case, I'll leave it as is. Next, I'll select the IPv4 DHCP section and adjust the DHCP settings to match the new subnet. I'll also need to enable and configure the guest Wi-Fi, so I'll select Edit once again, go to Wi-Fi, and then click Edit in the Wi-Fi window. Here I'll enable the wireless radio, change the SSID, and set a password for the guest Wi-Fi. I also want to enable client isolation so that guest devices can't communicate with one another. Once all the changes are made, I'll click OK. Then I'll close the Wi-Fi Connect and Edit Guest Network Windows to return to the Network Center. Now I'll start creating the remaining networks and VLANs by clicking on the Create button to start up the Create Network Wizard. I'll begin with the IoT network, which will also be the name I use. I'll change the local IP address using 102 for the third octet in the address, and I'll use the same number as the VLAN ID. Since all my IoT devices use Wi-Fi, I won't assign an Ethernet port, but on the Create Wi-Fi page, I'll check the box to set up Wi-Fi, enter an SSID, and set a password. Then I'll finish the setup. Next, I'll create the server network. Again, I'll change the local IP address and set the VLAN ID. All devices in the server network will use Ethernet, so I'll assign port 3 to this network, and I won't enable Wi-Fi. Then I'll click Apply to complete the setup. Next, I'll click Create again and set up the DMZ network. I'll change the local IP address and VLAN ID, then assign port 4 to the DMZ network, since those devices will also connect via Ethernet. No Wi-Fi is needed, so I'll click Next, then click Apply. At this point, all the networks and VLANs have been added, so I'll finish up by testing to make sure everything is working properly. I'll click on DHCP Client, and we can see my MacBook, connected to port 2 on the router, is assigned an IP address in the primary network, which looks correct. Next, I'll enable Wi-Fi on my MacBook and connect to the primary network's Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi should receive an IP address on the same network as the Ethernet adapter, and we can see that it does when checking the Wi-Fi settings on the MacBook, as well as by refreshing the DHCP client listing on the Synology router. Next, I'll connect to the guest Wi-Fi network. I should get an IP address on the 192.168.101 subnet. I'll check the Wi-Fi settings on my MacBook, and after reopening the TCP IP settings, I can confirm that I received the correct IP address. We can see this in the Network Center as well. I'll repeat the same test for the IoT Wi-Fi network. Since I'm connecting for the first time, I'll need to enter the password. The IP address I receive should be on the 102 network and VLAN, and that's exactly what I'm getting. For the server network, there's no Wi-Fi, so I'll plug the Ethernet cable into port 3 on the router. First though, I need to connect my MacBook to the primary network Wi-Fi, since that's the only network allowed to manage the router. Once connected, I'll log back into SRM, then move the Ethernet cable to port 3. Now, if I check the IP address assigned to my Ethernet adapter, I can see that it's receiving the correct IP address on the 103 network in VLAN. I'll repeat this process for the DMZ network, which is assigned to port 4. After plugging my cable into that port, I'll check my MacBook's Ethernet adapter 
and I can see that it already received an IP address on the 104 network in VLAN. This matches what we see in the DHCP client listing on the router as well. At this point, the networks and VLANs are all set, but devices on a specific network can only communicate with other devices within the same network because I've left Enable Network Isolation turned on for all the networks. To allow communication between networks, we'll need to configure firewall rules. I'll cover that in a future video, which will be linked here on screen if it's already been released. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me to assist in configuring your Synology router, you can contact me by checking out the links on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.